It's a, it's, a, it's a wormhole, but not that kind of wormhole. This is a wormhole. The other ones were wormholes. This is a wormhole. All right, anyways, let's go in. Hello, everyone. My name is ASDF. Welcome back to Shadows Over Loathing. We have way too many side quests. Well, we only have two, but we can't do them. One, we need 1,500 meat to get this glass of milk, which is completely overpriced. I'm kind of hoping that there's a glass of milk somewhere else. And then Fish and Chips wants him to find you some barbecue sauce. So, oh, I guess helping people at the feed store, they aren't side quests. They're just quests. So for Rena, we just talked to her. Um, oh, we got her an engine, right? So we need to talk to this old man. Hey there, I'm ASDF. How do Pixley's the name? Grover Pixley. Okay, I got too much music going on. Uh, say, this might be a real fortuitous encounter. You got a minute to help an old man with something? If it's a chess thing, I'm afraid I'm not your guy. What do you need help with? I need a bag of fertilizer. I came in here a week ago or, or so ago to pick one up, but I completely forgot they don't sell it here, so I've just been playing chess with Farida instead. You've been playing chess for a week? Well, you know how it is with games. Just one more round, you say, and then the next time you look at the clock, it seems like it must be lying to you. Uh, we all know that feeling, right gamers? Huh? Just one more, just one more, and then it's 4 a.m. and you see the sun rising. That's a bad feeling. Anyway, I've been meaning to go- oh, anyway, I've been meaning to go to Grode Valley Orchard and see if they've got any fertilizer to spare. If you happen to find yourself out that way, you could do me a real favor. Okay, I'll go. M great, much obliged. Here, let me write down some directions to the place for you. Grode Valley Orchard. One sack of fertilizer will be plenty for my purposes. Can't imagine they'll, they couldn't spare that much. Gotcha, I am on my way. And then, let's just go in order. Go to the orchard. Were there, was there anything else? No. The no house thing bums me out. Because, uh, man, I just want to know what's there. Uh, and then you hear a deep moo sound that reverberates through your guts all the way down to the colon end. Yeesh. Slowly you turn around. That field was empty before. Now it contains an entire herd of black wounds in space, each one in the shape of a cow. In the middle of them, a shadow cowbell hangs silently on a post. Well, we're going to fight the cows. Because even if we lose, we'll gain stats. Buzz is hanging on by a thread. And he healed me. What a pro. Okay, double the damage of your next mysticality attack. I want to see if this um, strain counts as mysticality. Because we're doing around 20 damage. But if this doubles it, we'll be doing around 40 damage. And that sounds awesome. We'll still summon our minion and buff everybody, just in case it doesn't. Oh, it only did 5? Oh, because they have 13... Well... They have 13 spooky armor, so it did not double it, because we would have been doing, like, 30. So, that's fine, though. Um, let's go ahead and just heal Buzz with our cheese ball. Minus 4 to all stats. Okay. I think it's fine. Oh, they can't take more than 5 physical damage at a time. But we'll do spooky damage. Oh, they have spooky armor. This is a hard fight, especially for our build. This is a really hard fight now especially for our build. So, you know what? We'll just, um... Let's take that guy out. Because he's sitting around doing nothing. Uh, I guess we deal 8 spooky damage to all enemies. But they have spooky armor, so it'd be better to chomp. Oh, they have so many stats, though. Oh, increases all shadow stats by 9. Okay, well, no wonder. We should have been, uh... We should have been taking that thing out from the beginning didn't realize and now now it's just now we're, there's no way we're winning yeah they're doing way too much damage now okay trying trying again though that's fine so we should have taken out the bell first time we just we haven't had any uh, hard fights so what is happening here this looks like that pit in half-life you guys remember with that worm thing that like screeched something awful. Somebody has attached a very small, very bad house to this truck. Go inside. No, there's no way that house contains anything of use to a non-hippie. Okay. Well, she must be a hippie. Uh, Grode Valley Cherry Orchard. A fretful looking young lady sits behind the fruit stand. Hi, I'm Maggie. Welcome to Grode Valley Orchard, I guess. Uh, hi, I'm ASDF. You seem to have kind of a worm problem. Yeah, I'm pretty conflicted about it. On the one hand, I'm an anti-capitalist. On the other hand, those worms are really bad for business. Yep, that's a tough one. 
Uh, can I buy some cherries? It's not cherry season. When's cherry season? Who's to say? What season is it now, even? I think it's canonically October. Definitely not cherry season, then. Okay, you said you're an anti-capitalist? Yeah, I guess. You don't sound particularly enthused. Well, it's not a very good year for that field of counterculture. The Wobblies have a huge schism four years ago. An anti- oh. Anarchism is super unpopular right now, and I'm almost 40 years too early to be a hippie. I guess if I hold out for 25 years or so I can be a beatnik, but I don't really like poetry that doesn't rhyme. Gosh, that's rough. You have a, a spare any fertilizer? What do you need fertilizer for? Well, it's not for me, it's for a guy I know. You don't have to be cagey about it, it's just fertilizer. It's not drugs or, uh, I'm gonna say prawn for the sake of the video or anything. Uh, what? No, honestly, it's for someone else. Uh-huh. Well, I do have plenty. I could give you some in exchange for helping me out with these worms. I kind of figured that'd be the deal, yeah. Okay, I'll do it. Great, I'll unlock the basement. The worms tunneled into it, so you should be able to follow the tunnels to their nest. Your produce stand has a basement? It doesn't even have a roof. The guy who built it was really into basements. Roofs, not so much. I didn't have the heart to insist. I see. Where is it? Behind this pile of cinder blocks. Help me move them out of the way so you can see it. The two of you shift the pile of cinder blocks and Maggie unlocks the trap door. There you go! By the way, watch out for the Marachino down there. Who's Marachino? Our cat. She's our last line of defense against the worms. Kind of also our first line. Not very effective. It's hard to explain communal labor practices to a cat. Well, let's get to worming. Oh boy. A uh, bunch of bags of fertilizer. More than anyone could use in a lifetime, assuming there only needed one bag every four to five years. Well, we got 240 pounds of fertilizer. Why would anybody need 240 pounds? And why is it a bag? You heave a massive bag onto your shoulder, then effortlessly stuff it into your pocket. Technically, you aren't entitled to this until after you finish dealing with the worms, but I guess I can't stop you more than Maggie can. Okay, we'll deal with the worms. Whatever this machine does, it isn't doing it right now. Uh, the machine appears to be missing a part of worm gear by the looks of things. Someone left an old toolbox down here. We got some stuff. Okay. Um, the worm tunnel looks big enough for you to crawl through. This tunnel's clogged with nasty smelling growed worm. Awful. Great. We'll convince the growed worms to go somewhere else. And I smell like growed worm stink now. Brilliant. Okay, we need a worm part though. I was hoping there would be like a, you can reach your hand into this hole. We'll just crawl through the wormholes. Ha! Ah, ha! Wormholes. Ha! Uh, some growed worms are in your way. Let's fight them. How much health do they even have? Not a ton. So, and this, this didn't work. So, uh, no point in doing that. We'll just fight them the old fashioned way by straining the heck out of them. And then punching them with our... Autonomous cheese curd. Sentient cheese curd? Sentient cheese curd, that's the word. Okay, worm squeezings. Yay, worm oil. Increases sleeves armor by six. More worm squeezings. Excellent. A sloppy little pile of worm egg casings. Well, so we could just convince the worms to... It looks just big enough to crawl through. A uh, lithe enough Splunker could squeeze through this opening. Okay. Oh, we could have just avoided them? Interesting. Okay, we'll fight them though. It's easy fight. Easy peasy fight, unless they poison me for like 16. That would be kind of a bummer. Plus 10 to all stats, man. That's, that's nuts. Chomp. Burn. We got more worm squeezings. Excellent. It's lubricated with worm goo. It would be the work of a moment to plunge through it. Okay, let's let's fight these guys first. Okay, summon you. Hot damage. Buff everybody's stats. And then hit them all. Punch them. And then shadow speech. That should take them out, right? I guess it doesn't matter. Buzz is going to wrap it up. Alphonse needs an upgrade. Um... Well, what is this? Okay. Oh, we don't have stench armor. Well, we're gonna in a second. We need a book that gives us stench armor, to be honest. Because, I mean, having to having to switch our stuff out, every that's spooky. That's not right. Stench armor. Having to switch our armor just to be able to do this. I, it convinces them to go elsewhere, but I don't know. 
It's just, they're, it's not that hard of a fight, you know? So, um, where is our creepy glorious tiara and our whatever we had on before? What did we have on before? Um, oh, the Monster's Club Sash for plus one all stats. Wow, that was a lot of damage. These little guys will get taken out pretty easy. I wish I could target who gets rained on with the fire, because the little guys will get taken out, so it would be better to have them on the big guys. Okay, he has 20, we're attacking for 21. And then we gotta hit that guy. Oh. Okay, that's, we'll just, we'll just insta strain. Got it, more worm oil, more worm squeezings. Oh, ready for the big bad? Oh, it's a cat. Oh wait, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wormhole, but not that kind of wormhole. This is a wormhole. The other ones were wormholes. This is a wormhole. All right, anyways, let's go in. Fruit Ninja? Hey ya! Hey ya! Ha! Ho! Ha! He! Hu! He! He! Two on one! Double bonus! Alright. I like these little mini games. I don't know what the point is, but okay. A uh, very large worm. I wasn't expecting it to be this big. What's on the other side? Nothing. And all these sparkles are from the tiara. There's nothing special about this cave. Uh, Don T, what are you doing here? All right, check this out, Don T. This is how we do things here. And then we then we strain them, strain them. Okay, Don, actually not bad. Not as good as my cheese curd, but it makes you move like a worm. That's all we got from that. Um, no way are you following it down that hole. Not for all the fertilizer in the world. Where there's some hobo code on the wall here. What does this say? 18 knowledge. Holy moly. We got a worm pellet. Is that it? Okay. Well, I guess now we can go up. You know what? It's probably faster to just wander and then we'll come back. Okay. We find some meat. Um, it's probably faster to go here. Whoa, 10 mysticality. See that bee? You didn't even see the person speaking to you at first. They'll be dead in 132 years. All bees will. I can make predictions that far out because I've got a long telescope. But as for the why, why are the bees going extinct? Well, I don't know that. Reckon nobody does. Okay, and then we'll go back to the orchard. Boom, now we're outside. We didn't have to go through. I dealt with the worms. I noticed. Help yourself to the fertilizer down there if you didn't already. Here, let me throw in a little bonus. We experimented with preserving our cherries in jars, but nobody bought them. Probably because nobody wanted five gallons of them all at once. Okay, maraschino cherries to the speakeasy. We named it after the cat. Uh, you know, it's a little weird that we got through this whole deal without ever referencing the cherry orchard by Anton Chekhov. Yeah, I guess. I've never read it, though. Yeah, me neither. Okay. That is a lot of cherries. Uh, before we go back, let's go to the speakeasy. Because do we have a perk right now from an effect? Oh, we do from booze. It's sleaze armor. But we got a bunch of sleaze armor, I believe, right? From a book? Oh, no, we didn't. We need stench armor and sleaze armor and cold armor from books. Um, we have a lot of other things to bring. Like, we have that block of ice. We have the maraschino cherries. I found some ice. Cool, baby. I found some onions. Great, I can't start... Uh, I can't wait to start making martinis for people who are bad at choosing a good kind of martini. Found some cherries. Nice. These will be the cherries on top. Okay, so let's do one mysticality. And we were doing plus three sleaze armor because the other ones don't matter. It's hun. And then gain three extra XP, five regen, and plus ten to item drops. A magic ice cube. Regen sounds like it would take longer, so... XP from fights it is. Fancy cocktail. All right. Uh, okay. Then we are back off. Back off. How? What happened? It's just a black screen. All right. We're back. And we are going to gray country. Okay. So we got this guy's fertilizer. Uh, perfect. This will be plenty. Thanks for your help. Sure, no problem. I probably ought to get back to my garden, but maybe just one more game first. Still got plenty of time. Okay, I think we did everything for everyone else. Tricky looking puzzle box. Want me to take a crack at it? Shh. Don't you know at this very minute, 
Mars is the closest it's been in opposition to Earth for a century? I studied at SIT under... Huh, actually I never learned my teacher's name. Almost every, ra every transmitter in the world has stopped broadcasting for 60 seconds in case any Martian signal speaks through the radio. And have they? I don't know, you were talking. Whoops, sorry. Don't sweat it. Mars was never my favorite planet anyway. Too much silica. The name's... Uskaloosa. Uskaloosa Barnhill. Yes, that's right. My middle name is also Uskaloosa. Oh. Have you... I heard you helped out my friend Wendelin. You looking for any more work by chance? Um, Uskaloosa. That's an unusual name. My folks named me after the town where they met. Oh, where was that? Uskaloosa. Okay. Seems like I'm always looking for work. That's so? How'd you like to go to outer space, kid? Sure would. Yeah, me too, but the closest you and I are gonna come to space, I think, is a little piece of it inside Ammon Molaross's place. Uh, she shows you on your placemat where it is, the Molaross place. A little piece? What, like a meteorite? Exactly that! A genuine chunk of the cosmos landed right in Ammon's lap. And between you and me, that's not right. The only thing empty in outer space is a ma that man's head. A meteorite? Even just a little piece of it? It ought to be in the hands of someone who will appreciate it. Take care of it, understand me? Yes, you want me to steal a meteorite. Which ought to be a piece of cake, because just the other day, the whole Molras family sat mysteriously disappeared. There's a lot of mysterious disappearances. Is he in the cornfield too? Wait, what? Yeah, so uh, you'll just be able to waltz on in there, I bet. What's that you're playing with? Puzzle box, and a real tricksy pig of a puzzle too. Maybe I could solve it for you. But then I won't have solved it, and they'll know what type of lock to put on my cell. Okay, see you later, Uskaloosa. Let's head over to wherever you told me to go, the Mulross house. Uh, there's something familiar about the long-haired woman on the road, uh, who stands waist-deep in a puddle of last night's rain. Ah yes, it's the woman you saw standing waist-deep in the swamp bog, but this time she bears no sword, and it doesn't look like she's brought you any gifts or treats at all. For decades, the blade of your great aunt was hidden with my family for safekeeping. Now the weapon is yours, but our business is not yet concluded. Yeah, I remember. I haven't used the sword much lately, though. It is your sword to do with as you will. My family kept it for you in exchange for a boon. I will call upon you now to perform it. With the fulfillment of your obligation shall come an end to your burdens. I speak, of course, of your swamp geese. Uh, I actually got rid of the swamp geese on my own. But I was waiting for this day. Where's the boon? Uh, the month nears its end. At this time, the concerns of our family turn to our mortgage payments. We ask your assistance with our next bill. That's it? We are a proud family and do not ask for handouts. Only a little help in exchange for services rendered. 400 meat will suffice. I thought you lived in the water. Yeah, but we just purchased a brownstone for when we are in the city. Um, We repay our debts. Even our grandpa's debts that we have already solved on our own. So, uh, you act with honor. You have earned our respect and I am pleased to bring an end to your swamp geese. She waves a hand and the geese begins to work its way through your system like a trapped wind. Its escape is extremely loud and incredibly rude. You fear the noise will give offense and you'll have to do another geese or something. Uh, but the woman has already returned to the water. Great. That's a thing that we did. Uh, notice of repo from a bank. They've apparently taken the mailbox. Nice. Strange looking telescope. A worried man, an astronomer perhaps, stands beside a weird-looking telescope. Best not tarry here, civilian, if you care for your safety before you lies a horror house. Civilian? Well, I don't take you for a surveyor. What's a horror house? A surveyor's term, forgive me. A horror house is like a haunted house, only real. Haunted houses are real. In all my life, I've never surveyed one. You're just gonna have to trust me on this one. I like how he says... A horror house is like a haunted house, but real. But realistically, it's just a haunted house. Like, he just made up a term. This is honestly, this is what this generation is doing. All right. I'm a millennial. I'm going to be proud of it. And I'm looking at Gen Z and millennials together are just coming up with the same old stuff that has been out there forever and renaming it and pretending like we've invented it. Like this, it, this is a while ago, but did you guys hear about the silent quitting trend that was going around on TikTok? This is where essentially when you feel like you're overworked and or underpaid, you just, you don't quit. You just stop going above and beyond. You, you do the bare minimum required to skate by in your job and get paid and then get out of there. And this was like silent quitting and people were telling everyone to do this because, you know, it's like you got to stick it to the man. And that's just called being lazy at work. Like, 
Whether you think it's a good or bad thing to be lazy at work, like they're paying you to do a certain job, and if you do that job adequately, even minimally adequately, you should get paid for it because that's the agreement. But if you ever want to get ahead, that's why people go above and beyond at work. So that's, that's just the reality of the situation. If you want to be lazy at work, you can be lazy at work. That's your prerogative, and you might have to deal with the consequences. But calling it silent quitting and saying this is a great thing, like, no. That's, it's a thing that's already existed for such a long time. I digress. Let's get back to the game. But yeah, Gen Z making up terms for things that already exist and pretending we invented it. Uh, what makes this a horror house? That house there belongs to a farming family. The Molros clan, I should say, belonged because they vanished. And I should also say doesn't belong because that house belongs to the bank. I speak of Jessup and Paddington National, who have commissioned me to assess the value of the house for its resale at auction. Uh, what's the problem with the house? I'd say the problems with this house began when a meteor from outer space smashed through the roof. I can see how that might be an issue, sure. Three months later, the Mulross clan fled by night, and I presume by car. They ran off with no regard for their mortgage. Can you imagine so heartless to care little for the bank's bottom line like that? Uh-huh. I was thus sent to assess the value of the Mulross property for the bank, only... only I'm spooked. Okay, what's stopping you from surveilling the house? He shudders. Listen. I entered the surveyor's seminary to avoid the horrors of war, and here they are right on my doorstep, which is that literal doorstep. I've surveyed the entry, every state of this great land, and I've never, uh, and never have I seen things so frightening and mixed up as the abnormalities in that house. I can make no sense of it. What abnormalities? Just, you know, things. Mixed up things. Could you be more specific? No, I, I don't know how to describe it. Why don't I take a look? Uh, I don't think you have the eyes of a surveyor. Uh, no, but on the other hand, I'm not too scared to go into a house. I guess it wouldn't do any harm, to me. Here's what I'll do. I'll give you the house key, and if somehow you can fix whatever's going on, enough for me to carry out my work, you can have 10% of whatever my valuation happens to be. Fair? How much are we talking about? What, what do you mean? How much is a house worth? Why, don't tell me how much you think a house is worth, and we'll go from there. I think a house is one million meat. One million? That's ridiculous. Don't you ever pay a million anything for a house? No, if I'm right, this house is worth 5,000 5, meat, which will be a fee of 500 for you. What do you say? <laughs> sure, I'll take a look at the house. We got the Moros key. Grand stuff. Good luck. Uh, good luck. And for your own safety, don't look too closely at anything. You're not a trained surveyor. What do you think happened to the Moros family? That's not for me to survey. Between you and me and this Theolodite? The Theodolite? Okay, something strange must have transpired. This was a highly profitable farm. What kind of a name is Molross? I think it's foreign. What country? I don't know, I haven't surveyed abroad. This guy is just like his response. One million from a ha for a house could never be lots of people in Cali. Yeah, right? One million for a house. Uh, how did the Molross family vanish? I can't say, I wasn't there to survey it. Dude, you don't have to put survey in everything. Just because you are a surveyor doesn't mean every answer has to have surveying in it. Uh, do you know U Uscaloosa Barnhill? No, I don't believe I've surveyed her. Sounds like a fun time. Well, bye. We got a noodle. A no the proverbial noodle in a haystack. The bank probably wants to repo the hay in this stack. If they had their way, banks would probably take a bale out of everyone's stacks. Ha. Oh, the bank has likely repoed the well's rope, and it's probably working on the rest. We have a shadow rope. Uh, is this a secret tunnel? Dude, what? Where? For real? There's a bunch of boards haphazardly covering the window. I can't move now. Oh, I had to jump to move? That was weird. Um. That's so weird. Uh, that's all we can do, though, because there's this big rift. That's the way back up if you're really done being in a small well. I am. I don't know how to get over this, so... Yeah, I guess, uh, I guess we'll go up. That's really strange, though. That is, that is some very strange stuff. Uh, I'm looking for a hobo code. Uh, as you head to the backyard, the surveyor speaks up from behind you. Sorry, it's against surveyor code to ever enter a backyard without permission. You'll need to go through the front door. That's ridiculous. I don't make the rules, I'm just a stickler for them. <laughs> That's just me. I love rules. You unlock the door and toss the key back to the surveyor. 
what in the world? Uh, a bronze plaque on the table is inscribed Mailross. Search the drawers. In the top drawer, you find a large stack of orders for Mailross produce impaled on a spike and a collection of handwritten letters inquiring if the house is for sale, also impaled on a spike. A note from Nabby Mulross in order to move more spikes for mail. Um, well, you're not supposed to cry over spilled milk. Spilled chowder is another thing entirely. Uh, quite a fine piece of furniture. The farm must have been doing well before its ruination by meteor and subsequent abandonment. E oh, got sucked in. Okay, that's fine. Let's go back. I want to see that note on the chessboard. Each of us is uh, but a chess piece on a board if you think about it. And which are you? Um, I'm the chessboard itself. I am the universe. No, I, I am the tall and pointy. No, I want to read the bookshelf. Okay, you know what? We'll deal with this thing first. Search the fridge. We got a gallon jug of bitters. Oh, bitters. Yes. We can make... Okay, we tossed the key back. Are we going to have to... Okay, we already unlocked it. That's fine. So let's go on the big one. Okay. Um, curiously colossal cabbages, grotesquely giant garlic, and an enormous egg. Ah, I found a typo. Back to the front, okay. We'll go here, try this one. Oh, the backyard! Hey, look at that! Oh, these wormholes have made a real dog's dinner of the dog's dinner. A uh, pot that a pig's in. Hello, sir. Snarf! Snarf! Uh, I guess that's it, unless we can go through the corn? Yeah, no. Ah, got permission to enter the backyard, I see. Yeah, let's call it... We got permission to enter the backyard. Okay, there was another door here. And then we got into this room. Try this. Okay, that's not ideal. Does this one go to the backyard? No, this one's fine. Okay, let's try to get to the other side. Let's, let's, no. Okay, that one's a dead end, but we can't get through... Maybe we gotta go around the top, or maybe they don't suck in as much when they're small. Hmm, I don't know what to do about this. Can we go around the bottom? Nope, can't go around the bottom. Well, we're kind of stuck. Maybe we can go just under the table. No, we get sucked in immediately if we go up that way. Okay. I guess we have to go through this main one then. Then we go this way because we haven't yet. Okay, then we go... A telegraph machine is upside down. Could be the Australian model. Ammon, do not abandon house. Stop. Stay on the property ladder. Stop. This direct order from your papa, stop, a.k.a. the main mole Ross. Okay. So... I'm kind of confused. We've gone through both of these, right? I can't, I can't move. What's, what is happening to the game today? I'm totally stuck. Oh, how weird. Okay, maybe, I, maybe it's my keyboard? Oh, my keyboard's like freaking out or something. Okay, let me just unplug it, plug it back in. Man, today, the, the tech issues today. I got a jump? Nah, I tried jumping. Maybe this weird telescope can help. There's a bug on the lens, appraise it. Who is to say the value of a bug? Me, I can say, what is the value of a bug? One million meat. This bug is thus surveyed and, um, okay, well. That house is Swiss cheese with worm holes. I don't think you're 100% correct on your observation. To my eye, the holes couldn't have been made by a worm. I valued the bug on your theodite, uh, theodolite lens. A what? At what? A million meat. I hope you don't think I'm giving you 10% of that. That wasn't the deal. What do you think happened to the family? Okay. How do we... I'm really stuck on this one. I don't know what to do here. So here's the kitchen. 
Where does this one go again? Back to the foyer. And the tall one goes, is this the backyard? This one's the backyard. But we can't get up there. Oh, we can paint the fence. Having fulfilled the condition to overturn Will Hunter's curse, there's nothing further to be gained by painting excess fences, except by a certain aesthetical stand aesthetic standards a more beautiful world. Uh, for the more beautiful world, paint it. Just paint it. Paint the fence. We're learning karate. Nice and clean for the pig to enjoy. Are you a big pig or a little pig? Snarf! The wormhole's too high to reach. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe we can do something in here now. Need a ladder? Yeah, this must be the remaining interior damage from the meteor strike. Yikes. So we're upstairs. I was like, can we jump in the hole? But we haven't seen this bathroom before. So we need to get upstairs somehow, which means we need to get through the foyer somehow. Oh, maybe there's a regular door in the kitchen. Is there? No. Okay. There's no regular door to the kitchen. We can get through here though. What is this spot on the wall? It's driving me crazy. Okay, we've seen that message. Nope, didn't mean to get sucked in there. Um, well, we can't do anything now until, like, we haven't, we don't have the right thing for this. So I guess we can't finish the Molros house. We can't finish any of the remaining quests then. Uh, just off the road, a little path leads down to an old stone well. Here at the top of the path, there's a sign that just says don't. Next to that, there's another sign with a skull and crossbones on it. Next to that, there's a post with a hook on it and a rusty fire extinguisher hanging from the hook. So that's a little unusual. Unlock the... Is it the heck hole? Let's go there. Maybe it's the whole hole. Um, wow, it's hot here. Caution, don't throw anything that starts with H down this well. Oh, it's an H hole. Work to Herc? It's the Herc hole. Uh, smoldering bush. This rock is boiling with rage. Okay, we got some resin. Fence isn't really accomplishing anything. Um... Well, let's fish. You're not gonna let that sign tell you what to do, are they? Oh, uh, we got liquid fire and one wet cigarette. Gross. Let's throw something in the well. Let's throw a handful of clean water in the well. Okay, things that start with an H. You lower the handful of clean water into the well, nothing happens for a few minutes, so you pull the bucket back up. You got an item, a handful of clean water. Whoever's down there must not be interested in that particular one. How about heavy boots? Um, they're not interested in that. How about a haunted duck call? Nope. Um, it's- now it's cursed! What? You put the duck call in the bucket and lower it into the well. When you pull it back up, it's somehow even worse than it was before. Uh, deal spooky damage and cause bleeding. What about- oh, what about the hot rod? Nope. What about hard candy? You put the candy in the bucket and send it down. When it comes back, it's been transmorgified, mostly via inflation, into a cake. Okay, devil's food cake, plus one to all stats. That's pretty nice. What about this ham? Oh, His Majesty's least favorite poems. Uh, you lower the terrible book into the wall. It comes back in a more scorched, but also more interesting form. The posthumous works of the romance poets gives cold armor. Coldridge's armor, very nice. Okay, let's let's read up on that because we needed cold armor. You mean Coleridge? Uh, no, anyway, you don't want Coleridge's armor. It only protects you against other Coleridge's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, and now... Ta-da! We have a lot of cold armor. Well, that was a great thing to throw in. Um, we, we can put a handful of holy water in there. They're not interested in the holy water. What about the hand-washing gasoline? We got liquid fire. What about hardtack? Oh, more devil's food cake. What about the hematic icker? We got boiled blood. So it looks like it just cooks things that start with H. What about a human bean liver? We got a human bean liver. What about a handful of soapy water? No. What about a hamethyst armband? We got a flamethyst armband. Okay. 
What about a hollow gator tooth? We got a gator tooth gun? Okay, this is one of the hollowed out gator teeth converted into a gun that shoots fire you've been hearing about. Oh, have we been hearing about those? Handsaw is now a molten handsaw. Okay. A uh, handful of dirty water? Nah. And we've done- we've done all the other things. Have we done the Hamethyst Choker? A Flamethyst Choker. Nice. Well, that was exciting. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. We've- we've done all the things, so... Uh, you change your mind, maybe the sign is your boss after all. Nah, I'm just choosing my moment. Well, we got a bunch of items that we're not gonna use, so... That's nice. Hey, mister, wanna buy a brownie hat? Uh, why would a brownie need a hat? I guess I could see putting a little beret on a croissant, but no, 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 not the eaten kind of brownies. I mean, the little elf guys from fairy tales. You know, the ones that fix shoes and sleep with your wife? What kind of fairy tales are you reading? Real old ones. I am very confused. I mean, I'm just assuming they're brownies. Little elf looking guys anyways. They build little villages and hollow trees and stuff. I found an abandoned one the other day. Looked like a bun- and looted a bunch of little hats from it. Want to buy one? Only 99 meat and all the proceeds go to charity. What charity? Me! Can I see them first? Sure, have a look. Well, we already have these hats. No thanks, I'm good with my current hat. We can go get a lot of meat from the guy at the docks that takes pictures of hats, by the way. Oh, we can translate this now. Do not let appearances deceive you. Gain 25 XP. I... I don't know... Um... I met that Gilmore guy. Okay, he's good. We still need a glass of milk for her. And we need 1500 meat for that. Um, we, we're done with her, we're done with her, done with him. Um, uh, typical normal fertilizing stuff. Back in an hour, someone scrawled, yeah, right, in a thick layer of dust. Um, bend to the mole. I don't need the whole meteorite. I'm no space hog, just asking for a little piece. Okay. Goat feed and donkey feed and mule feed and cow feed and mule feed and cattle feed and mule feed and chicken feed. Um, that's all- that's all we can do right now, though, so maybe we'll look at side quests. Glass of milk. So we need a lot of meat from somewhere. Let's see if we have anything that gives us extra meat. Can we filter for meat? No. We're just gonna have to go through them and look for meat. Um... No hats with meat so far. Oh, plus 30 to meat drops. Okay. The sieve is too good to do anything else with, so... Um... These are all active items. Monster club sash already gives us meat, I think. Um, we need a, a meat ring that gives us meat. Increases, oh, at the start of combat. Three to five meat after combat. Sounds good. Work pants. 25 meat drops to a pair of pants. Wow, that's pretty good. Uh, 20 to meat drops. Great. Vampire boots and Buzz the Mosquito. Okay, so we have a lot of meat drops now. We just need to go to a place where there's fights. Um, did we put an engine... Back on into the thing? Or, I don't know. We're just wandering. We're wandering. 25 meat? Nice. We unlocked a uh, Papu Sasku homestead. Let's go there. Okay, the mailbox says Papu Sasku on it. You got junk mail and an old insurance company letter. Based on your previous experiences, you expect this is exactly as confusing as it is boring. Well, maybe we can read it. Uh, you can't open the letter because you don't have a letter opener. Ah, we need a letter opener. We got farmer's pants and farmer's gloves. Very nice. Oil drills taking a break from despoiling the earth. Property of Helco Oil Conglomerate. Keep out. Let's keep in. We got a chunk of lead and an awl. We can't make a letter opener, huh? Nah. Null, we can't. 
there's a Helco logbook on it, full of meticulous records written in meticulous handwriting. The whole scene is so meticulous that meticulous doesn't even sound like a word anymore. Thanks for ruining that word for me. Oh boy, it's my first day as a drilling site supervisor and I can't wait to prove myself. I'm going to work hard to establish myself as a real up and comer. And then once my career is secure, maybe I'll have the confidence to pop the question to Clara. You know, the marriage question. Anyway, the crew has Derek set up, the Derek set up, and we're turning the drill on tomorrow morning. Seems like the the former owners of the house have cleared out already. They yelled a lot of angry sounding foreign words at us yesterday, but they were gone when I got here this morning. I feel kind of bad, but that's progress. So we started drilling and hit a big air pocket near the surface. Is hit the right word? Can you hit air? Anyway, it's probably just a random little cave. We lowered a couple guys down with lamps to check it out. In unrelated news, I heard a big explosion from just west of here. I checked the maps and whatever's over there, it's not a Helco facility. I guess I'll just have to read about it in the paper tomorrow. Turns out the cave we drilled into is an old gold mine. Go figure. When we strike oil, it'll be a black gold mine. Ha ha. It's writing ha ha in your own journal. Um, I should write that down. Oh wait, I just did. Anyway, we can't find any record of it in the geological surveys, and we can't find the entrance either. I guess it must have caved in years ago. I set the crew to dig in a proper shaft down. They're starting in the root cellar of the house because it's just slightly lower than ground level, and they get paid by the hour, not by the foot. Uh, one of the crewmen was trying to get a closer look at some magazines he found hidden in the attic of the house and the carbide lamp on his helmet started a fire that torched the whole place. Nobody was hurt, fortunately. What a mark on my record that would have been. After the fire went out, we cleared a path down to the shaft and put a trap door over it to keep the ashes and rubble out of the mine. News for, new orders from above. Baron Hellstrom wants us to re reconnoiter the mine. I guess that makes sense. If there's any gold left in there, then hey, free gold. But every time someone goes exploring away from the ladder, they come back all pale and sickly looking and freak out when they see the sun. You just can't find good help these days. Guess I'll have to do it myself. It can wait till Monday though. Had a really nice weekend. Super relaxing. I really needed that. Went on a date with Clara and had, we had a great time. I think maybe she was hitting about getting married, hinting about getting married too. Oh jeez, what am I thinking? This is a company logbook, not my diary. Anyway, it's time for me to go see what's in the old mine. Back from the old mine, it wasn't so bad down there. I don't get why the crewman acted so weird. It's nice and dark down there. Not all bright like it is up here all the time. It's really giving me a headache, to be honest. I made some friends down there too. Great guys that really understand me. I think I'll knock off early and go see if Clara's home. I just can't get her rosy peak cheeks out of my mind. Uh oh. Vampires? There's a locker. Inside the locker, there's a blazer. And there's an engagement ring. Aww. Oh no. Fancy diamond ring you found in the blazer and a locker in a trailer. It's too small for you to wear even on your pinky. Is Clara actually a puckwudgie? Wanna hit the road? No. I wanna see what's in the, uh, in the basement here. Look for the trap door. You clear away some of the burned rubble and fall in masonry and sure enough, there's a trap door in, in what used to be the floor of the root cellar. You open it to reveal a ladder leading down into the darkness. Steal the ladder! Okay, well here's the rift. Um, we got Eldridge Mist. Nice. It's a meat machine? Why is my face a bean? Do we have to just win? We gain 157 meat. Holy moly. No luck. Six blade plum. That's so loud. It's so loud. A wisp of smoke emerges from the machine. We hit the jackpot and emptied the thing. How much meat do we have now? Enough for a glass of milk? No, but we're like plus 400. <laughs> we got a pickaxe. Can we pickaxe this thing now? No. Refine some- You refine as much of the ore as you can with your bare hands and gain enough for a glass of milk! Amazing, let's go. Okay, what's this? Looks like someone was drunk mining. Uh, oh, and that's putting it mildly. Uh, hi. It has been many years since a human interloper has invaded our home. How novel. Haha, <laughs> yep, that's me. Uh, novel, I mean, not the invader part. Perhaps, if you please us. Oh, we will permit you to join our family and live down here in luxury forever. Luxury, living in an abandoned mine? He gestures behind him to the rear part of the tunnel. It's actually really nice back there. Oh, huh. Uh, the vampires regard you with interest, though an unsettling percentage of that is interest in your neck. Have you guys been trapped down here for 11 years? Nearly, yes. If we must thank you for clearing the debris that came to block the trap door as the foundation of the house further collapsed over the time. 
Oh gosh, that sounds terrible. Oh, not at all. We are quite he wealthy. It is very comfortable down here. Sure, but don't you get bored? The vampires exchange glances. What? Admittedly, things did get a bit stale in <coughs> the bedroom. We had to invent whole new categories of kink previously unexplored by sentient species. Yeah, we are real, real nasty freaks now. <laughs> okay, changing the subject. <laughs> they regard you with interest. Um, well, now that you aren't trapped anymore, what are you going to do? Well, we've definitely got to go find some proper food. I'm so totally sick of these ghouls. Yes, they are so dry. It's like sucking the blood out of a turnip. Ugh. Um, well, we'll fight them. Should be easy. Oh. No, they're strong. Uh, they're, they do a lot of damage, but they seem pretty weak, so we'll set them on fire. Underground fire rain. How's that? Oh. Alright, that was easy. Skullcap, a bloodle, and 400 meat! Wow. Okay. Is that just because... That was a hard fight, or um, they would have been living in an iron mine instead, because iron's a lot stronger than gold. Yeah. They really did class it up. 400 meat? The bottom drawer is full of meat, but gold, and we'll just convert it for your convenience. Um, <laughs> we're just going to skip that one. All right. How'd they even get electricity down here? Uh, fancy Miller catalog. We got expensive luxuries, incorporated catalog. And we're gonna read it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. And then let's see what that perk did. 110% uh, to item drops. Great. There's surprisingly, there's a surprisingly undesanguinated guy back here, which means he still has his blood. Uh, hello? Salutations! I'm Crocius Vanderbilt. You may have heard of me, I'm the richest hobo in the world. That doesn't seem like a high bar to clear. I'm claiming the title regardless, and you are? Oh, I'm ASTF Gaming, nice to meet you. I'm indebted to you for getting rid of those vampires, ASTF. I've been hiding back here for weeks. I was obliged to eat my cravat for nourishment. Oh, jeez. Uh, what are you doing trapped in a vampire mine? Ah, well, it isn't a vampire mine, you see. It's a gold mine. I found the other end of the ore vein in a small cave a short distance away and tunneled my way here. Unfortunately, the point at which I broke into this occupied section was the same point at which my tunnel collapsed behind me. Yikes. Indeed. It was all I could do to remain hidden in these rocks, praying that those creatures of the night would leave at some point so I could make my escape. I've seen things that will haunt my dreams for the rest of my life. Please don't elaborate. You know any hobo code that you could teach me? Certainly most financial jargon, but no one knows when what might come in handy. Great. You know there's a hobo camp just outside of Ocean City and they could use some help wealth-wise if you don't mind sharing. Ah, oh, wonderful. Crozius Vanderbilt hobo philanthropist. That has an excellent ring to it. I shall head there directly. Great. Um, there's a special kind of chest that only rich people are allowed to know about. Okay, well, now that we've done that, we can go to the cornfield in the Drexel Stead. Hang out with a rock. Uh, and, oh. We really need to go to a shop to get a letter opener or something. We can go here, we can go buy a glass of milk from the milk guy. Not far enough to the left, apparently. Wow, the milk guy's like real far back here. And all the way around. And we'll get a glass of milk that we can go take back to the lady on the front porch. And at least one of our side quests will be done by then. I almost bought a saucer. It's a potion. Is it supposed to be this beige? Gross. Old style milk. Okay, no. We're leaving. We're going back to the feed store. A dozen eyes wink and two mouths make kisses at you from within a squirming corpulent blob of crude oil. This is very rude of the blob and it feel it likely only feels comfortable in being so because it is protected by a circle of electrified shale sparks, spires that spark with lightning. Harness the lightning. We got fossil fuel plus one mix mysticality. Anything can attract lightning if it is the tallest and pointiest thing in the area, drawing upon your deep command of the arcane. You jump up and make a steeple above your head with your fingers. The lightning abandons the spires and nestles in your bones. Not feeling so big and strong anymore, the blob bows in apology and shuffles away. I love it. Take that, blob. Hello again, darling. By any chance did you find that glass of milk for me yet? It's very important to me. Yes, here it is. 
Oh, darling, I knew I could count on you. Let me just give you a reward. She stands up and plants a slow kiss on your cheek, then chuckles as you feel yourself start to blush. Now I could really use a drink. Oh, what about the milk? Oh, I mean a real drink. The milk is for later. Thanks again, sweetheart. Aw, oh, it was nothing. And now we're kind of just back to wandering around for a while. Um, a pack of hulking devils crest the horizon, surfing the back of a giant inflatable rat. Some jumpy little fellows hop up and down on the balloon rat's nose. Hey, fat cat, devils don't work for free. You summon, you pay. Huh? I didn't summon you. And who are you calling a fat cat? Be your name Hellstrom or Joffregal McDo? Someone's got to give these devils their due. Well, let's just fight them. Oh, they're bit. They're really big. Um, okay, well, we'll do the same thing we always do for fights, so... Should be an easy fight. I forgot, we're not doing as much damage because we have all those meat things. So, but, I mean, that was, that was easy. Um, that'll teach them a lesson about demanding fair compensation for their labor. Keep up the good work, uh, friends. I'm just gonna wander around, see if we can get some stuff going. On the road you pass, a farmer slumped in a wooden chair. He rocks back and forth on the front porch. Although there's no house behind him. Looking for the old ham mill? It's, uh, thar way. Though it hasn't blown for some time. Where's the rest of your house, old man? First of all, I'm not old, I'm thirteen. Younger than you, I reckon. As for the house, bank took it. It's tough times all over. Sorry to hear that. Uh, he nods, and just as about as he, just as he's about to say something else, he and his front porch are whisked away in a passing bank van. It's tough times all over, indeed. Well, we'll go to the mill. Whoa, a vast fallow field. The wind blows, yet the mill stands still. We can paint this fence back here, and I see that hobo code. Do you guys see the hobo code? I see the hobo code. Oh, Yoshi chatted, and now no one can see it. Uh, go 50 paces west, huh? Oh, okay. Well, let's reach the side. Shadow salad, yeah. Uh, they just fit a whole house in a van? Yeah, pretty much. But west is actually north, right? I don't know. Uh, the clock is stopped, perhaps in solidarity with the windmill. It's hand 607. The windmill is set up to make flour, but it hasn't done so for some time. Lumps of the last batch lie in the wooden basin gathering dust and a real stink. Uh... However long this ground flower has been sitting here, it's too long. It smells rancid and appears to have become a new home for bugs. We're going to equip some stench armor real quick. Um, uh, we're going to equip some more stench armor real quick. We need a book for stench armor. Oof, the flower's fragrance has two notes, bad and worse. But you've let in... Uh, and once the dank and fetid odor is at your home in your nose, it commences to make all sorts of trouble. You need a good nasal wash to rid yourself of this olfactory vampire. Well, we eat some flour. It's not good flour. Even if it was, you really shouldn't eat it. <laughs> we tear into the old flour with your teeth. It explodes in your mouth, and when you do something, hard and cold slides down your throat. Hard to say what it was. Maybe it's something you want in your stomach, but it doesn't matter. It's there now. Check out the bugs. A baker's dozen of long snotted bugs bur <laughs> burrow busily in and out of the flower. They seem to be hard at work. How far gone must this flower be for it to not only have attracted bugs, but for those bugs to have given themselves a project? According to the partially destroyed calendar, today is Burns Night, the annual celebration of life and works in the 18th century poet Robert Burns. Uh, no, on closer reading, it's just that the um, thing is burned. Okay, we'll equip our lucky hat. Do we have anything that adds, um, well, I was going to say meat, meat drops to a hat, but well, um, steady wind sweeps through the empty mill, it's wooden boards bending and bowing, bowing in reply. What's wrong with this windmill then? If there's enough wind to make it spin, something must be the matter here, but what? The, probably a solar problem, I'm an astronomy miner. That seems right. That's probably it. We'll go to the upper parts. Oh, there's a bookshelf. Please, oh please, years of hay and mourning. Please, oh please, have a book. We got a book. What is it? Looks like the proclamation from something called the National Flower Standards Committee. Uh, Bakers, nothing in this world is certain except for taxes and flower death. If the flower has gone bad, a quick sniff will tell the tale. Six months, um, it was feeded, right? So it's 36 months bad. 
Okay. Someone's kicked the safe over and bashed its lock in with a hammer. It's not a pretty sight, but the safe knew the risk when it took the job. Specks of flour float through the air and the dust cracks the safe like snowfall. Um, oh, and dust the cracks of the safe like snowfall. As a chemicals major, you know that, of course, particles of flour suspended in an enclosed space will explode if ignited. And what space is more risk enclosed than a safe? Uh, I can't remember learning that. Um, what are they even teaching these kids these days? So let's, um, let's set it on fire. Nice, we got an inspection report. Uh, National Flower Standards Committee... Makes you walk like a windmill. Okay, 1923, that's five years ago. Does that help us, though? Uh, way up in the windmill, the wooden walls keep bowing and the wooden floors keep groaning, but there's something strange. The sounds are too regular, too precise. There's a pattern, you notice, and it feels too deliberate to have occurred by chance. Uh, the particular sweep of the wind against the wood, the sound it makes, those aren't noises, they're words. Whoa. Oh, whoa. Oh, why? Unmistakably a voice, but hollow and shaken. What are you? Oh, good peddler, I'm the living spirit of this old ham mill. Though you'd surely forgiven for thinking it had no life left. Why'd you call me a peddler? Oh, tis mainly peddlers who frequent this mill, trading for grains and other stuffs, but... Pardon my assumption, not all those who wander through the ham mill are peddlers. You are the windmill? Oh yes, and does this shock your sensibilities? Does this shock you very much? No, I've just never met a windmill before. Oh, and I wonder if you have or trod merely on the embers of Alexandria after Caesar. I don't know. Oh, whoa. What's wrong with you? Oh, but I cannot bear to spin any longer. It has become unbearable to me. Is it a solar problem? I was an astronomy miner. Nay, the wound cuts deeper than the mechanics. I have been distraught from the moment I read the bad news. What news? Sir, uh, I prefer... Uh, I refer to the Pulitzer Board's cynical capitulation to award the prize for drama to Sidney Glout over the great Haldi Howell. This thoughtless piggery agitated me so thoroughly that I could not even read on to learn if that smut merchant Marnie Mornay won for poetry. Anything I can do? Nay, when the arts are made a joke, so too is life and living. Why are you so upset about the Pulitzers? Oh, but a world in which the arts are poorly valued is a bare desert sans life. Uh, I meant more, why does a windmill care about the Pulitzers? Surely someone must. Wow, what a, what a stab at the Pulitzers. Tis why Troy fell to the barbarians, tis not. Too little appreciation of the arts. And do you think pious Aeneas headed that, he did that lesson when founding the greatest Rome? Yes. No! Rome fell as well, and we shall soon follow now that the Pulitzers have in the depths of their per perversion recognized the monstrous Sidney Glout for drama. When did this happen? Sirrah wondered what happened. This whole episode about the Pulitzer Prize for drama. I cannot possibly remember. The incident has irreversibly shocked my faculties. Were you always like this? I do not understand the question. More concerned with the arts than being a mill? Yes. Were you built out of an old library or something like that? The walls rattle at your words. Oh! Oh! Negative interference! What? Talk of chopped and splintered wood. Talk of axes. How am I to take these violent suggestions if not as a threat? I'm only trying to understand why you're so interested in literature. Oh, well, I would beg you to choose your words more carefully in the future. But if you are so curious, the answer to your bull in a china shop question is yes. Yes, it used to be a library? Oh, yes. And that's why you're so into literature? Yes, you have the right of it. Okay, great, thanks. Prego. Okay, well, that, um, that's not helpful. I, I don't know why we went in in the first place, but 
uh, we'll leave the flower alone. We gotta finish today's quest, um, so that we can get these, uh, these curses off of us, because we've got a bunch of, like, minus perks and stuff, which are not sorted by relevancy. Oh, yeah. Minus one to maximum AP, another minus one to maximum AP, so, I don't know. We, uh, we got a bunch of perks, I guess, but that takes us to the end of today's episode in the middle of this barren field next to this gloomy windmill that refuses to work. Um, but, you know, that's life in the old wherever we are. So, thank you guys for coming on by, thanks for watching. If you guys are on YouTube, please like and subscribe. It's one or two clicks for you, it really does help me out a ton. And as always, I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.